Cheers. Hey, I'm Aaron. And I'm Cole. And this is Two Chill Reviews. And this week, Tinker Tailor Soldier Spy. And it's a, a spy thriller. Um, not your, not a James Bond kind of action uh, thriller, but uh, a lot slower, more more intrigue. Much more, <laughs> yes. What they're doing, I guess, is they're trying to track down the. It's it's a mole hunt. It's a mole hunt, yeah. And um, for those of you who don't know, uh, it's a 2011 film based on a movie, or based or on based a book. book. Yeah, sorry, book series. Yeah. Um, yeah, from, from a series of uh, political spy thrillers from the seventies. Mm-hmm. I mean, a, a, a hard a hard part about this one is because there were a lot of long silent scenes. Or uh, near silent. Yeah, uh, you were. That was something you actually checked up on, and that was eighteen minutes in, into the movie is like the first moment the main character, uh, uh, played by Gary Oldman, actually says his first uh, first words. We see him. He doing. He comes. He comes in around the five minute mark. But he doesn't. Yeah. And then he's there for the entire opening sequence, where he doesn't say anything, mm-hmm. and he just follows him around. And other people say a few things, mm-hmm. but I, the, one, the one point they were getting across, I guess, was that this guy was supposed to be retired. The, he's at home, what was he, what was he, watching TV or something? And he gets a knock on the door, and it's like, hey, I know you just retired, but we need to pull you back yeah. in. At points, there isn't a lot of character. Like, mm-hmm. Smiley is very subdued, very subtle, very... That's- very quiet. Mm-hmm. His body language, you really oh. have to key into. Yeah. And then you get a lot. Yeah, it, it really but felt it's... like a lot of these characters were having full on conversations, but they weren't actually saying anything. They were just, uh, they were just with each other, but the other t- the other characters would know what there's the other was saying, I guess, or trying to convey, and then they would respond in kind. Or, or, and even even in just like little scenes, uh, where you see, you know, um, when Cumberbatch was in the library, constantly mm-hmm. you see just little how characters are acting, and it really shows a lot. There was a lot of really good um, uh, body language and communication of just those little like his hesitation or another person's just kind of like inquisitive looks or, Mm -hmm. and it all kind of fits together to make a really nice scene. Mm -hmm. Um, But as, as for Smiley's character, uh, A, he has a hilarious name and B, he, uh, unless you clue into those, you may mistake him for a completely blank character. Almost because he well for the most part I I feel like he was biding his time uh, if he was to really pursue anything I guess uh, it would have thrown up some flags for the mole so I felt like for the most part he really had to oh he was definitely smart mm-hmm. and he did he he took his time in an intelli- in an in an intelligent way. Mm-hmm. He really, you know, he, he wasn't, he yeah, was the retired like, guy who, <laughs> the retired old man who knows mm-hmm. how to get shit done. But it's going to take his time, you know, mm-hmm. really get it down pat. I really noticed that at the start oh, right. was um, a lot of shots where it would show, you know, this person and then it'll fade and it'll show the other person or it'll, you know, it'll show one person's face and in the background, faded or like out of focus mm-hmm. will be something else. And it'll, there was a lot of playing with that I found in the, in the cinematography, mm-hmm. which um, I do say was fairly well done. Mm-hmm. Lot, lots of interesting shots. <laughs> there was one driving shot that for some reason stuck out to me because of, you know, there's lots of ways to do it. A driving shot when you're, you know, you got the sheet running behind you or the 
having it mounted on the front, mounted on the back, or whatnot. And for some reason, that there was one scene about a third of the way in that, or maybe a quarter of the way in, that really stuck out to me, uh, cinematography-wise. Because it looked really old-fashioned in how they did the driving scene. Uh, I felt like there's a few scenes that probably were symbolism, but it's one of those things that it's like you wouldn't get until your second time watching it through, which we haven't done. But like, there was one uh, swimming scene where they've got Gary Oldman swimming one way and two other guys swimming the other way. I'm pretty sure that's supposed to symbolize something in the story, but it's like without. Well, I thought I thought that was part of part of one of the. Because uh... I thought that earlier, they showed him and John Hurt swimming together. Did they? Or was one of those, either that or one of those two guys swimming the opposite way was John Hurt. Right. Or it looked a lot like or him. Like, yeah, probably was. Um, That's the thing, there's like yes. so much going on. There's a lot going on. And not just, not just that, but they screw around with uh, the order oh, a lot. They screw around with flashbacks a lot, which was constant, really confusing. Just because... Constant... There's running no, around in, you know, there's oh, no, we're at this party. Oh, we're at, you know, now. Oh, we're at a torture scene somewhere in the middle. Oh, we're like, at the party again. Oh, we're at here. But they're, they're they don't really slam cut every time. It's, it, it's not, there's no, uh, they don't ease you into the flashback. It's just uh, all of a sudden. Mo most, most of the time they'll give you a shot where you can go, oh, these characters are together. Mm -hmm. It has to be, a, or oh, it's this party again. They go back to that one Christmas yeah, party, Christmas party yeah. over and over again. But it'll be like, oh, John Hurt's here. Obviously, this takes place before this point in time because his character dies like at the start of the movie. So and that was, um, well, he, he didn't die. He was he was shot. No, John Hurt. Not, not, uh, not Mark Strong. Oh, right. Um, wait. John Hurt was Control. Okay, but when did he die? At the start, when they both got kicked out, when they were forcibly retired, he got ill and died. Okay, I totally... <laughs> that was in, like, that the first five minutes. Okay, huh. When we weren't quite, uh... I guess I missed that just because they kept having flashbacks with him in it, and I just didn't realize that he was dead the whole time. <laughs> no, yeah, that's 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 the whole point. That was like this, his whole, oh, he knew about that there was a mole, and that okay, so. after he got kicked out, that's why he was try trying to, you know, build this case... And then he leaves and dies, and his partner comes back and yeah. has to finish the case. <laughs> wow. Okay. Yeah. No. There's. I definitely missed. I. I think I probably missed a lot in this movie. There's just so much of it going on that, and they treat a lot of it like I don't know. They just they they treat important facts as trivial mm -hmm. sometimes. So you, it, it's just so, not something I would keep in mind. And then when later it comes up, it's like, wait, what just happened? Yeah, there's no hand holding here. No, not at all. We had to pause a couple times to try and figure out what was going on. Um, I, th I think we kept it going pretty well, but there were a few... There, were, I remember two times specifically that we had to pause and figure things out. Mm -hmm. Though the first one really was just because of Benedict... Cumberbatch. Oh, right, yeah. So, that was in the opening sequence. It was like, holy shit, Benedict's in this. Oh, yeah, and that's... he had He's sporting another hairstyle in this one. Um, in this movie, he's a dirty blonde. Sherlock, he's got dark hair. Um, he plays Julian Assange with white hair. And then... Now, and he's, then a now he's a dragon. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, it's <coughs> technically no hair. Yeah. But... Uh, Frickin' Benedict. <laughs> you keep popping up everywhere I look. What is with... You just... They, 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 had, Colin, they had Colin Firth. Yes. Um, they had, a, that they, was, that they was... had a pretty good cast. Mm -hmm. They had a, 
a very nice uh, collection of talent here. Again, we uh, Mark Strong, who you uh, was one of the first guys you actually pointed out. Um, I always seem to whenever he pops up, I'm always like, "Oh, it's that guy." Mm -hmm. I always have to look up his name afterwards, though, because I'm horrible <laughs> with names. Tom Hardy's character, I actually uh, really liked. I find a lot of the time he plays characters I don't really care particularly care for. I thought he looked good with a beard. <laughs> I thought he uh, uh, looks much more... Uh, for some reason, when he's got that scruffiness on him, I can just take him more seriously. I don't know why. It's just one of those little things. <laughs> I, I, I just remembered what my favorite scene was, actually. I did have a scene that really stuck out to me, and it was just... It just came back to me now. Okay, go ahead. Uh, it's when Benedict Cumberbatch is going down the stairs, and he hears the guy walking by. He's humming the same <laughs> song that he heard, uh, that Benedict heard while he was on the phone with um, the guy asking for the, the, like, the auto shop, I guess, or whatever. And... That was just so, so, so. It was. He finds out that he's being spied on mm -hmm. because the spy walked. That, that it's like one of the, 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 the guys. The guy, the guy that phone tapped him walks by, seeing the whole music. Mm -hmm. And that yeah, that, <laughs> that was pretty hilarious. Yeah. Um, my favorite, maybe just out of the absurdity of it, was the uh, the. Stalin Santa scene. Oh. Uh, where they. The communist Santa where he just walks where up and then. All, you know, all the Secret Service agents are having their big uh, Christmas dinner party thing, and this guy in a Santa suit with a communist, you know, the, the yeah, exactly. hammer and sickle the right hammer here, sickle. wearing a Stalin mask, comes up with a big sack and starts. Uh, uh, singing sing the, the Russian, na the Soviet national anthem with the band playing it in the background, and everybody starts singing it. <laughs> like all these British, like MI6 agents and mm -hmm. all these special service guys, all you know, totally getting into this, into their enemy's national anthem. And <laughs> I don't know, it was. Uh, Definitely a weird scene just to a see all these. A little bit weird and also kind of a little bit, um, it's striking in kind of a political way. Just like how, yeah, how it's, they mock, I guess. It's not just absurd in, you know, something you wouldn't expect. It's absurd in the kind of playing with your, playing with how enemies think about each other and how... Uh, you know those little things. I don't know. There was a lot, a lot of stuff that we missed. Mm. Uh, this was, you know, a lot of, uh, a lot of quick talking or things that like you just barely grab on. Mm. Lots of hush tones. That was actually one thing they had going on is that there was a lot of things that they sort of said, or, like, the way they said it felt like it wasn't a big deal, but later it turns out, oh, that thing you didn't really yes, definitely. give much attention to, it was like, oh, it turns out it was a big deal, or a huge deal. I, def I definitely get that. Watching it, you'll, they'll, they'll mention something offhand, and it'll whiz past you, and then two scenes later, oh, blah, 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 um, something that we brought up in like one line two scenes ago and you're like what i was supposed to remember that <laughs> yeah no it's it's a ridiculously complicated story um i feel i feel it was a bit uh I it think, read a bit better on page yeah it was it the story the, the amount of stuff that that has going on it, it probably worked a lot better in the book than it did on film because it was not to say it, it didn't no, work. It, it was still a, a fun movie to watch, but it was still... Um, I felt like I had to be paying attention the whole time 
otherwise. It, yeah, you, and it just didn't care to leave me behind. You couldn't really rest for a second. You had to constantly be paying attention. Okay, who is this person? What are What's their affiliation? What are they doing? And every line, something's being updated, so you're constantly having to... Who is this person again? Uh, what's... What's this person's connection to this, or various little things? Mm -hmm. this... Any final thoughts? Um, nice. Right, so that's pretty much it. Yeah. Cheers. Cheers. I always like to uh, judge characters' crying scenes. How oh. how heartfelt is that? Is oh. that moment? <laughs> There were a couple of them in there. Benny's was pretty good. I, I would I would rate that fairly high. Mm -hmm. It was it wasn't a ten. 